good afternoon uh, everybody uh, to another session of uh, uh, the webinar which is with the week five uh, there are some technical issues for people joining in for dialing in from the primary uh, number for which they can use the secondary number uh, obviously they can't hear me but uh, let me just take this number out for the time being I do not think many people have been joining through the phone line, the audio line, so which is good. Um, they don't have to depend on this number which you see on the screen. Uh, let's just wait a uh, couple of minutes maybe for... Uh, We'll see if any more people are joining in and then uh, we can start the session. Uh, I think we can start the webinar now. So just so that everybody is aware, uh, today we are going to be uh, focusing on uh, debugging using exhaust uh, log filter uh, and uh, how to create the filters, um, how we can use the EMS event management system in a switch for troubleshooting purposes and uh, we'll discuss one use case uh, also, so my name is uh, Sandeep Raghurajan. For those who, who do not know me, I am the uh, uh, I'm a technical consultant for Extreme Networks uh, India, and I've been conducting these webinars for the past four weeks now, and we are into the fifth week. So the numbers to join in for the audio are given on your screen. So these will be the topics that we will be uh, focusing on today. So we'll, I'll give you a brief introduction about the event management system uh, and the the targets, the log targets to which we can configure the event management system to send the logs to and uh, use it in the future for troubleshooting or whatever purposes you need it. Uh, we'll be focusing on uh, how we can filter the event management systems based on components and uh, subcomponents. Uh, we can filter it using matching expressions. We can filter by using uh, matching parameters. We'll discuss one use case and uh, go into question answer session. So what is the event management system? So it uh, there is a system in place for all the exhaust switches. Uh, generally, it's there for all the switches. Uh, so, you, you have um, a system in place which, which can display all the events that are occurring in a switch and uh, you, can, uh, you can save all, all these events and you can even filter the events. You can send these events to specific targets where you want, say, like a syslog server which is configured. You can send all these events to the syslog server or you can uh, uh, upload these uh, logs onto a TFTP server. You can do a lot of things. You can use them for troubleshooting purposes. Uh, so that you, you know, logs are uh, the primary information that would, uh, that attack engineer would request from uh, 
uh, from you when you're contacting them for uh, any uh, issues. So because logs just tell you a lot of information. There are a lot of events occurring in the switch. Uh, we'll see what all types of severities, etc., are there on the switch, and uh, we'll see how to configure each of them so that we can, it becomes easy for us to troubleshoot. Uh, so uh, you can filter these events, like I said previously. Uh, you can filter them. Uh, you know, whatever specific events that you want. And there are a lot of ways you can filter them. Uh, you can filter them based on a specific component. We'll see what the components are and uh, subcomponents. We can use a match expression uh, to filter it. Or uh, we can use matching parameters, severity level. There's lots of ways you can configure it. We'll look at every one of them in detail. Uh, you can even uh, in exhaust you can also change the format of the of the these messages that they are and the way they are displayed uh, and then uh, if you want the messages to be displayed on the screen as you're looking at uh, working on the uh, switch if you want it to be displayed you can display uh, for that you'll have to configure the uh, target as a console or a, the telnet and so based on the telnet and the console session and uh, the logs will be displayed as they are occurring the logs and uh, you can also display the stored messages from memory buffer or um, nvram memory buffer is nothing but your uh, when you do your show log uh, command from the switch that's where your uh, memory buffer so that can store about 200 to 20000 lines of messages even management messages and uh, this is a configurable value so depending on how, how much uh, logs you want to be displayed the lines uh, you can configure them uh, you can even uh, upload the logs from nvram to the tftp server so nvram is nothing but uh, your non volatile ram so uh, generally the logs in memory buffer will be deleted once the switch is rebooted so in such cases uh, you can what you can do is you can configure uh, your log target as uh, nvram in which case, even if the switch is rebooted, you would find logs in the NVRAM uh, even after the reboot. Uh, you can also uh, display the counts, the number of times uh, an event has occurred, uh, display debug information. Mm. So debug information, generally it is used by TAC and uh, I would not recommend you start using it. Uh, so we'll leave that to the TAC engineers. So these are the targets uh, to which you can send uh, your log messages. Uh, just give me a moment. Let me just see if the need, if anybody's got any issues. Okay. So if anybody's got any issues, you can just probably type in uh, so that you can, I can get an idea. So I hope everything is fine for now. So we'll go back into our session. So the, uh, there are seven uh, primary log targets to which you can send the log messages from the switches. Um, this is very uh, important logs, like I told you. Uh, you get a lot of information, troubleshooting information, just from the logs in the switch. So one, is the, uh, the, one of the targets is the console display. So when you're logged into console, you will get uh, the uh, display of the logs as the events are occurring. So even before you type a command, you can get a pop-up, uh, not a pop-up, it will just display, the command will just, uh, the event will just display on the console session. Or you can configure the target as a telnet. So if you're, if you're using a telnet connection to the switch, uh, as you're telneting into it, uh, you would get the events as they are occurring displayed on your screen. Uh, memory buffer is what I just explained previously. It is just nothing but your uh, uh, sh the show log output that you use on the switch. So it can contain about 200 to 20,000 messages, lines of messages. Uh, it's a good thing to have the, this configured, uh, the memory buffer. Uh, if you feel that there are a lot of events occurring, you can in increase the lines of the messages. Because after the 20,000, uh, you know, uh, 
the logs would be deleted on a first in first out basis. Um, next target would be NVRAM. Like I said, uh, if you feel that the uh, switch has uh, would reboot or uh, you know uh, if the reboot occurs, the logs would not be displayed in memory buffer. In that case, what you can do is you can configure the NVRAM uh, to store the messages. In which case, the uh, logs would remain. Uh, you may have tech engineers asking you to send you the show log output, and sometimes they would be asking the show log messages. NVRAM output as well. This is because uh, after the reboot, the information will be available only in NVRAM. You can also send the uh, EMS messages to the primary MSM, the secondary MSM, or uh, the primary and backup, as in the summit stacks. You can also configure the target uh, syslog host as a target to send the messages to. So uh, basically, uh, not all by default, not all uh, event management messages are sent to each and every target. So you have to configure them depending on your uh, uh, on your need. Uh, only uh, show log uh, the the memory buffer would be configured as well, and NVRAM as well would also be configured. And uh, rest of the things you would have to. Uh, automatic you would have to configure it depending on your requirement uh, so the messages that you send to a specific target uh, the event management messages uh, you can set a severity level uh, you can uh, you can give it a filter name and uh, you can also um, uh, get a uh, get it to match an expression we'll see what all those are what the severity levels are and what are the filters that are available and what match expressions that you can uh, use so uh, when sending to a specific target uh, you can say like uh, you do not you need not send all the uh, severity levels uh, like severity levels are like the info or the critical or the warning messages or the error messages you know these are the examples of uh, severity levels so you, it's not necessary you need to send every message to any uh, to a target you only need uh, if you think you only want the critical messages to be sent to a specific target you can use uh, the severity level or if you want to configure uh, a specific filter you can you know these are all customizable you can give it give the filter a name and you can configure the filter and uh, if you only want specific uh, information like from a specific user who's logging in only those event management systems you want you want those to be sent to a specific target you can use a match expression like a user username username would be a match expression so there's a lot of ways uh, you can configure the uh, uh, event management system and uh, it is all customizable. Um, so by default, if you are not aware of uh, how to configure a filter, and my recommended way of using would be to use something called as a default filter. This default filter is always available in the switch. It's all it's already created, and uh, it has all the events or uh, like it has all the components included in it. So. Uh, it will match everything. So all the events uh, can, can be sent to a specific target using the default filter. This filter is, uh, is uh, available on the switch by default. So if you want to see the uh, specific uh, configuration for uh, each target that you enabled, uh, you can use these commands, show log configuration target so the console will be would display the console uh, information, the configuration of uh, console or the memory buffer or NVRAM, etc. And uh, if you want to configure a target, the command to use would be configure log target. Uh, commands in uh, exhaust are pretty easy actually. For show, you would just have to use show, and uh, to configure, you use configure to create. You can use create, so it's all pretty easy in uh, exhaust when you use any commands. So these are the severity levels which I was speaking about previously. Uh, 
there are seven severity levels critical error warning notice info debug summary and uh, debug verbose or debug data so the last two which is uh, debug summary and uh, debug verbose it it generates a lot of uh, uh, events so it is not recommended that uh, uh, you just use it uh, the partners or the customers just use it so it's it's always recommended to use it with uh, uh, with some tech engineer who's available or uh, with uh, with their assistance or when they ask you to do it you do it it's because it can generate quite a lot of uh, logs and that can even uh, bring down a switch so it's better not to use these two without the help assistance of a tech engineer so the other messages uh, the severity levels are critical error warning notice and info these are the most uh, things that you can uh, look into and you get a lot of information just using these messages so if you are enabling a severity level of info anything including info and anything above it would be included uh, in the logs so if you enable uh, info you will get uh, event management systems related relate uh, logs relating to info notice warning error and critical so all these severity levels you will get but if you uh, enable only critical uh, you will get uh, only logs relating uh, which are showing up as critical anything below that will not show up so for example uh, you are sending some log messages to a uh, syslog target and the severity uh, i'm sorry uh, you are you're enabling uh, severity level critical messages to be sent to a syslog server uh, you would only get messages with uh, which display as critical you would not get any any severities which is uh, which displays as error or warning or notice so if you want everything to be uh, dis, uh, to be sent to the syslog server you can enable probably um, severity level of info and uh, everything else would automatically be sent uh, to the syslog server so if you enable something in between like warning uh, any severity level including warning and anything above it like error and critical would also be sent to the uh, specific target So uh, this is how you can figure uh, based on the severity level. So the command would be configure log target where you want the to send the target to be, uh, whether it's console memory buffer, or you want to be sent it to, to be sent to a syslog server. And at the end, you can mention the severity, which severity you want. You want only for one specific severity. You just mention you mention the severity and mention only at the end of the uh, of the command so if you want to configure a filter and then add that filter uh, for the target so the command would be the second command which is given below which is configure log target um, whichever target you need to mention and then at the end you would mention filter and the name of the filter so this is customizable so you need to configure the filter you have to create a filter and you have to configure the filter so you you have a lot of options in creating a filter and uh, you if you know how to use this it's a pretty strong tool uh, for uh, troubleshooting and uh, coming up with any issues you can address them with just with the ems itself so these are the filter types how you can uh, filter the uh, logs or how you can create the filter you can uh, uh, you can filter the messages based on components or subcomponents which i was telling previously components means uh, something like uh, for example for uh, stp stp is a component so for stp there will be subcomponents uh, like uh, uh, fdb clearing so each event it will be different actually for each event uh, like uh, so there will be a component and there will be some components for uh, stp or there would be for ospf or AAA or you know every protocol will have its own component and subcomponent so if you know everything 
the subcomponents and the components you can use it's a pretty strong tool uh, for debugging uh, next thing would be uh, filtering using matching expressions so you filter the ems uh, event management system messages using the matching expressions uh, such as a username uh, you know names or just port or the vlan etc just names using those specific uh, messages or the names uh, it, you can filter them and you can uh, send them to specific targets or you can use uh, matching parameters matching parameters would be uh, something like ip addresses or mac addresses or vlan ids etc So I was talking about uh, components and subcomponents. Uh, so if you look here, if you log into the switch, you have a way of uh, checking the components and subcomponents that are available. It's a big uh, list which is available. So you use the command show log components and uh, from A it starts, so AAA. So here you have authentication, authorization and accounting and under them, the subcomponents you will have as radius and tech access. So similarly for each uh, component like STP or OSPF or BGP or whatever, would it will have a subcomponent. And if you know to use them, uh, you can use these components for filtering the log messages. You create a filter and include what you want. Say you want specific uh, event management systems relating to STP, you create the component or STP and uh, if you know what subcomponent to use uh, say you want to leave uh, uh, when FDB uh, um, FDB is getting cleared uh, there is a subcomponent for that so if you know the subcomponent you enable that as well and you filter the target so when you create the filter <coughs> it's important that you know uh, the components and subcomponents etc because by default, if you create any filter, everything it will deny all. So all uh, nothing would match. So you would. So you need to know how to create the components. Uh, this is what I was just explaining previously. So for one specific component, you can send the messages such as uh, STP to a particular uh, target. So these are the steps that you would use uh, for uh, creating, uh, for filtering using uh, components. So first thing is you need to create a log filter uh, using the command create log filter. And you can mention any name for that filter, which you it's easy for you to remember. So you would create the log filter and then you would uh, to add or uh, include or exclude events you would use the command configure log filter followed by the filter name and uh, you can include or exclude even the components and subcomponents so if you include obviously the uh, the ems would uh, include all those components if you exclude it will be excluded so if you want to see the uh, what is the filter uh, commands that you were used? I mean, the configuration the, of the filter, if you want to see the configuration, uh, the command to use will be show log configuration filter followed by the filter name that you used. It's, uh, it is a name that you created. So I was telling you, if you do not know how to use the components or to create the, or uh, if you're not, if you're, if you're doing it for the first time, you can use something which is very safe, which is called the default filter, which is available in the switch. And uh, so the default filter will include all the components. So you can you can say you can configure the default filter to send the messages uh, to any specific target. So everything would be included. So if you see uh, the command below here, show log configuration filter default filter. And if you come, if you see below component, you would see it states all and on the left it states i which means it includes all the components by default so you do not have to worry about uh, configuring it generally as a beginner i think it's good to use uh, this uh, filter which is the default filter and uh, send all information so you would have to sort out if there are a lot of log messages you would have to sort out through 
many of these logs when you're using a default filter because it's going to send you all the information but it's good it's a good thing to use as a beginner so next way of configuring a filter is using uh, uh, matching expressions like i told you uh, you can use a username or any port information etc like that uh, the port name or the port number etc so any event ma management message which is uh, which is created using uh, with, with the which contains the username would match uh, you this filter so so the command to use would be uh, configure log target and it's pretty similar everything uh, the you you, you mentioned the target where you want to send the logs to and uh, at the end you just use uh, match and the uh, whatever match expression that you wanted to match specific username whatever you want you can use so this is just an example of uh, how regular expressions should be uh, so these are all actually available in our concepts guide so if you, if you want information about it you can get it from there uh, because uh, it's very simple if you use a regular expression like uh, port it will match uh, the one on the right which says matches and anything no, you look to the extreme right it says does not match um, so if it states poor or poor alone it will not match uh, there are several ways you can use it if you're not sure about any specific expression uh, there are several ways you can use a star and a dot and a dollar there are several ways of using it in the matching expression so uh, another way of um, using a filter is uh, creating filter is using matching parameters so the i mentioned that for parameters you can uh, you can use the IP address or the MAC address of a system or the uh, port number. Port number is the layer four port number, which I'm saying, or uh, VLAN, etc. VLAN ID. There's lots of information that you can use using matching parameters. So the command is also uh, <clears throat> pretty simple. Uh, so. This will be the command that you would use configure log filter name you're mentioning the name of the filter so add delete or uh, exclude the event and the component So these are the pa matching parameters that I was uh, talking about that you can use. Uh, you can use L4 port, the IP address, MAC address, number, VLAN ID, VRID, lots of things you can use here. So I would, uh, uh, I think we've come, we've got an idea about how we can use the EMS and uh, send it to different targets and uh, how we can use uh, the log messages for debugging uh, it's a pretty useful tool because uh, generally every time you you uh, log into a switch or if you've got an issue with a, with a switch with a particular switch you can use the show log command um to see what event has occurred at what particular time so the events would be uh, would be displayed in a line and you just have to check at what particular date so what you need to know is what particular date you're looking for or what particular time you're looking for or what type of an event you're trying to look for so narrow down using the specific date or the time and see it at that time what has occurred even without this it's a good practice to have your logs sent to a syslog server or you take the logs from a switch and uh, 
check it regularly for uh, any information because logs are the ones which will display first and then before any event or uh, any issue occurs you can you can resolve the issue by contacting TAC and telling them okay i've seen this in the log uh, there is some issue so please look into it or if you sometimes you know uh, you have uh, your uh, cpu spiking so which will get displayed in the logs after depending on the threshold that you set so that will get displayed in the log so it's a good practice to regularly check your logs or if you have an nms system to notify you of specific details like uh, probably a fan has failed or uh, the temperature is spiking or the cpu is going high so the logs are a pretty important tool for uh, troubleshooting and it's a good practice to keep keep track of all the logs and uh, it would be good if you have an nms system it can notify you as well so um, i'll just discuss one use case here uh, which uh, we had done for a customer uh, <clears throat> so this customer wanted uh, like any um, any user who logs in or any uh, configuration change that is done on the switch should be notified to the uh, customer so he wanted uh, any change to be notified to him by the nms server so they had an nms server and uh, they had several switches and any uh, configuration change it's a it's a good thing because you would not want anybody logging and just making any changes and uh, finally you, you would end up in a lot of trouble so because of that they wanted this uh, setup so what we did was uh, first we had to enable the log target as the nms server which is nothing but uh, all you have to do is mention this command like enable log target syslog and you had mentioned the ip address of the nms server 514 after that would be the port number and uh, we are default you can use local zero so you can get all the messages and uh, you can also use these uh, commands after that configure log target so what we were doing is we were sending all the logs from these switches so you have to configure all the, these commands in all these switches and we were making the NMS server, the network management system server, as the uh, syslog server, so that it was getting all the logs from all the switches. And uh, what we did is there was, an, there was an option in the NMS server to configure, uh, to notify the customer uh, when specific configuration changes were uh, happening, uh, like uh, any configuration uh, that uh, like for example configure using the names words such as configure or create etc we were able to set up alarms so that it could be sent to the uh, uh, it could send a notification to the customer stating that any configuration has occurred so for this you you have to uh, do something called as the enable cli config logging if you do this Every time any configuration changes happen, that will get displayed uh, on the switch logs. So an event, an event is created in the switch logs, and that event would automatically be sent to the network management system server. And the server, when it sees that any specific configuration has, has changed, it's going to send an alarm to the customer. So the commands and information you can get it from me uh, it's very pretty simple actually so commands would be enable log target and then configure target so you can mention the source ip address in the second command and uh, so in this we have used something called as the the default filter which you are all aware of and from severity info uh, we are sending on the uh, severity uh, based on severity we uh, from severity uh, info uh, anything and anything above that is is being sent to the server uh, this is just the use case so next we'll go to some uh, question and answer sessions uh, first question would be how many log targets can you specify to receive log messages
So the answer would be uh, 7, which is C. C is 7. So the 7 uh, log targets would be your uh, uh, console, uh, telnet, nvram, memory buffer, and uh, primary MSM, secondary MSM, and your syslog host. So there are seven targets where you can specify to send the uh, the event management system messages. So we'll go to the second question, which is uh, what is the name of the filter that is available on the switch by default? I think everybody should be aware of this by now. Uh, that would be B, which is the default filter. So the default filter contains all the components and subcomponents. So it includes everything. So people who are configuring uh, the EMS initially, you can use this filter. So it's pretty useful. Third question is, uh, is it possible to create an EMS filter based on matching expressions such as a username? And uh, the answer is true. Yes, you can use matching expressions. Uh, we saw the formats that can be used, uh, how we can use a star, etc., uh, for matching expressions, star or a dot or a dollar, and how we can use those matching expressions to match the filter. So we've come to the end of this session. I hope uh, this has been very useful for you and. Uh, Based on my recommendations, I think you can start using the logs of the switches. Uh, you can configure the log targets wherever you want them to, uh, depending on your uh, requirement. And uh, use the logs for uh, troubleshooting and uh, also to avoid problems in the future. Yeah, you know, you can check the issues even before they are occurring. Um, I do genuinely hope that uh, this has been interesting and uh, uh, you you would start using the EMS uh, filters, etc. So thank you for watching and um, I'll see you next week. Uh, you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.